Let's bring you this story now. Consumers are being warned against a surge in phone scams. The new threat has been flagged on social media where fraudsters are pretending to be customer service representatives to con you. Let's find out how to avoid these scamsters from Manny van Skalkveik, who's from the SA Fraud Prevention Service. Manny, many thanks for your time this morning. One would have thought that fraudsters would have died down somewhat after the festive season, but that doesn't seem to be the case. No, not, not at all. Actually, I don't think fraudsters take holiday. Um, and they, they're just looking at new ways to get, um, to, to get their hands on our money. And I must say that the current trend that we're seeing is not new, actually. It's, it's quite a, a well-established uh, scam that is used. Um, and, but they, they're rehashing it because I think it works. Now, talk us through uh, that. Uh, well, you said it's not new, but it's a very recent one uh, that is taking a prominence of late. Talk us through how exactly the scam works and how any South African should be able to pick up whether it's a genuine call or whether it's a scamster. Yeah, I think, can I just take one moment and give a context of us? Is that mm. we hear about these data breaches all the time, and it leaves us with a, a little bit of a so what feeling, you know, the data was breached. But the, the actual fact is people steal data with one objective, and that is to to lay their hands on our money. Um, and uh, they do it in two ways, is that they o open new accounts in our name with the data that they've got, um, or they want to take accounts over. So sometimes they don't have enough data, so they will steal some data, they don't have enough data to do a, uh, an account takeover so to, to get into my bank. So, so they will do the most obvious thing and they will phone us. They will phone us to provide us so that we can provide them with the data. And usually a typical call will be, uh, Mr. Van Skalpek, you live at this address and this is your, your telephone number and this is your email address and this is your uh, ID number. So with that, and that is the information that they stole. So, so by providing that information to us, it is really uh, providing us with confidence that they know who we are. And then they usually pose this big question um, to say that there is a debit order that is coming off your account and we are here to help you. And, and is that okay? Of course, all of us will say, yes, please help me. I don't want to lose this money. And then the crux comes, and this is when they start to ask questions. And they're asking these questions because now this, this is the gap that they don't have. They don't have the following information and they're trying to get it up of you. And I must say, this happened to my mother. Um, and I, I want you, <coughs> excuse, me, excuse me, so so even the people who know that this is true um, and, and, and that we shouldn't provide this information, it happens to all of us. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said it happened to my mother. Um, so, so she's got all the information. I asked, you say, listen, my system just went down and um, I don't have uh, your account number quickly. Can you please provide it to me? I know I shouldn't ask you, but can you please provide me with your PIN? And the moment the system comes back on, I will, uh, I can stop that debit order with you. Uh, and then, you know, the last part, of it, and if you say no, they will say, but remember, uh, when the system comes back, this debit order is going to come through and you can't dispute it. So my advice to consumers is when they start asking these questions, just put the phone down. Don't argue. Don't try to uh, outwit them. They've been highly trained. Um, and, and just put the phone down. Phone mm. your bank on the number that you have, not what they would provide to you, because if you ask them for the number, they will provide you with their number and they will ask that they will answer that call as of APSA Bank or Standard Bank or whatever. Get the number that you have of a bank, contact that bank directly and find out what the problem is. Yeah. What's worrying here, Manny, as well, uh, just after what you've explained, is that these scamsters, these scamsters rather, are increasingly getting sophisticated. So some instances where banks or other institutions would upgrade their security systems in terms of protecting the consumers, so are scammers upgrading their own systems, making sure that they're able to bypass those systems. So it becomes a catch-22 in terms of dealing with this um, this. This, this, this issue that we have throughout the country. 
Yes, and, and I just just my last point as well is that if you provide this information, if, if they know asking for your account number and your PIN and et cetera, you provide this willingly. You, you are providing the information, and we have, some of us have got the hope to say, well, if these people steal my bank account empty, I can go to the bank and they will replace it, and they will not. Um, because if, if you provide this information willingly to fraudsters, they're not going to, they, 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 it's going to be your problem. No, absolutely. Uh, many thanks for your insights there, Manny van Skalkveik from the SA Fraud Prevention Service, giving us insights into how to protect yourself from scamsters who are going to be trying any trick in the book to get money out of your bank account.